So tonight is our Wooden Heart Workshop project. Um, we're going to do something similar to this with a little bit more detail on it. And it's kind of cool because we're going to show you how to do a couple of different techniques, including blending, stripes, and a couple of other things that I'm going to keep as a surprise. So, so that's what we're doing. So I'm going to be using Fusion Mineral Paint tonight. Fusion Mineral Paint has a built-in top coat, and it's also got zero VOCs, which is nice. So that means that you can paint inside and not worry about fumes or anything like that. So I already painted this with um, a fusion color called Cathedral Toe, and... Um, it's like a nice neutral. Yeah, it's a nice neutral, and even though I'm gonna be painting over it, I like to have a base to get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is some blending. So let's get started. I've got a couple of different brushes that I'm using. Uh, they're all synthetic. And I always wanna use synthetic brushes for painting furniture. Really, almost any kind of craft. The only time I don't use synthetic is if I'm using an oil or a wax or something like that. Otherwise, I always use synthetic. The reason being, natural bristles tend to break off so they'll break off and be dried up in your paint. Also, you get a smoother look with a synthetic brush. Because the bristles are finer than hair. They are, they are. So, um, let's get started. I'll be using a couple different colors. Divine Lavender, Twilight Geranium, I've already used Cathedral Taupe, which I might use a little bit more. And then I'll tell you the other colors later. So I'm gonna get started. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing this in, I don't know if you can see this really, but I have layers of colors, sort of an ombre, and that's kind of what I'm gonna do, except I'm gonna raise them a little higher. I, I think they should have been a little higher. So I'm gonna first start with my Cathedral Taupe. And I'm gonna to try to be not so wonky. It's hard to, on this kind of shape, it's hard to see where the line is to be straight across. Um, and I'm just putting a thin coat. I'm just putting a thin coat on. Okay. You know what, I'm gonna go a little higher with this. I'm just thinking out loud so you guys can understand my process. So I'm going to leave the very bottom cathedral taupe and I'm going to start my next color just a teeny bit higher and that's going to be the um, Divine Lavender. So I'm going to go to my next color which is the Divine Lavender <clears throat> and I'm just putting a little bit on the tip of my brush, not very much and I'm going to start not at the very bottom, but a little bit higher. So what I want is the line between the two to be sort of blurred. So it's a little harsh here, so I'm gonna go back a little bit with my cathedral toe and just go over it and come up a little bit. All right, so that looks better. I like that better. There we go. Now that's a nice blend. So see how you really cannot see the line exactly? That's what we want. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is start off this next section with just my middle color, which is the Divine Lavender.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my third color. Okay, so now I'm going to um, start bringing in. And this is great to do on, you know, like if you've got a dresser with oh, God, th with three or four cool. with three or four drawers, you pick yeah. pick three colors or four colors and just kind of go from bottom to top, top to bottom, and really make Absolutely. it look great. So now I'm going to bring in. Oh, actually, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to bring it in here. That's okay. Ooh, look at that. See how well that's blending. The wet brush makes a big difference. So up here, I want only the um, twilight draining. And what I'm what I'm going to do is blend it down in with the divine lavender. So now I'm going to go back to my um, divine lavender. I'm just going to take a teeny bit. So now I'm going to take my divine lavender and just kind of blend up a little bit. And this is a process. You can go back and forth and back and forth a little bit. That's exactly what I wanted right there. So Kevin's going to take this and dry it real quick mm -hmm. because we're going to we're going to we have another step after this, right? So when Kevin gets back, we're going to start doing stripes. Part of what I like to do to get really good clean stripes is I like to use the right tape. This is frog tape. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to sort of go on an angle and just put down my first piece. And you want to make sure that you um, get it nice and smooth on all the edges. Now I'm going to take another piece. And this is going to be my guide, this second piece. And the way that I'm doing it here is exactly how we do it on furniture. So I'm going to take it and put it right up to the other first piece. And take it down. I'll take another piece. And tape it down here. teeny bit off on your stripes. It's unacceptable. It is acceptable. <laughs> it's acceptable. I know. It is acceptable. <laughs> Just saying. So now I'm going to go back to my middle one because that's my guide and I'm going to pull it up. And I'm going to put it back down. And I think in a second you're going to see my method that I'm using. So what I'm going to do now is use, so we'll show you how to do ghost stripes, which are what I was doing on here. I was going to do the rose gold stripes, but I'm going to do something else with the rose gold in a minute. So what I'm going to do is actually take um, the middle color, which is the divine lavender, and I'm going to show you what's, what we call 
what we in the what we in the biz call um, a ghost stripe, and we got a really cool tutorial from CC Restyled on how to do it. So I'm done with my um, striping. You want me to blow dry that? My, I'm going to take the tape off first. Um, but did you want to do two coats? No. Yeah. Those are good stripes. Just good. So look, because of the blend, I'm using one of the colors that I used. So that's why we call these ghost stripes. Okay, so this is the next phase of our project. All right, so there we are. So you could really finish right here. And what's neat about this project is you don't have to have a heart shape. You could do this on a square, around, anything. And I think it would look equally Mm -hmm. Don't you think, honey? Mm -hmm. So, here's what I was thinking. So, what I want to do is um, stencil some rose gold, because I really want to use rose gold tonight, over this. So, I'm thinking about this stencil, and then, this, then we have this stencil. <coughs> now, again, if I use the hearts, I don't have to do all of them. And, and it would kind of be silly to do all of them because we just did this beautiful <laughs> work. We can... And we're gonna cover it up. So I would probably do like every third. So here's the rose gold paint. I need almost no paint. If you've ever watched a stencil, we use almost no paint. So I'm just dabbing my stencil brush. And I like to offload as much paint as possible until it's basically dry. All right, so let's go. So I'm just gonna dab on my um, rose gold. Ooh, Deborah's so good, filigree, that's what it's called. I couldn't think Thank of the, you. I couldn't think of the name. Thank you. Oh boy. Yeah, the chariot. Yeah. So you want your brush to be almost dry because when you stencil, the number one thing you want to try to avoid is paint getting between your surface and your stencil. That's when you get bleed through. And the way you get bleed through is, well, the main way is to use too much paint. Normally, I like, like I said before, I like to tape down my stencils, but with this particular project. And don't brush on a stencil. Yeah, don't go like this or like this, because then the bristles can get underneath, and that's not what you want. And if you think, if you just think you're a heavy stenciler, then do one light coat, move on, Yep. Go all the way around, it'll dry quickly, come back, and do a second coat. Whenever we do stenciling, and, and Sheila can attest to this, because Sheila works with us, um, we always, you know, try to really encourage people. We even do a practice project, and usually people do their practices really well, but then for whatever reason, they're working on their project, you know, their, their real project, and they get all caught up and they get impatient. Now, Judy's got an interesting one. Have you ever ghost stenciled? I don't think I so. I have not, but yeah. that would be great. Have yeah. you, Judy? No, she, I don't think so, because she's asking, is that even a thing? Well, we're <laughs> gonna make it a thing, yeah. 
You know what? Ooh. Honey, you want to get me another stencil brush? Mm -hmm. We're going to make it a thing right now. How's that? We got to get some rose gold down now. You know me, I'm always open to suggestions. Okay, so let's try some of this. I'm trying to do the twilight geranium near where I did the twilight geranium, so it looks more like a ghost, a ghost stencil, because that's a thing now. This could be the next big thing. Okay, so there's our ghost stencil. And this I'm gonna tape down. And when I tape down a stencil, I usually just like to put a piece of tape on the bottom and the top or on either side. I don't like to tape it all the way around. Some people do. You don't want to um, let your stencil dry on there. You want to pull it off before it dries. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> How does that look? Do they like it? Yeah, it looks good. Turn a little to the side because the reflection of the light kind of, ooh, there, now you can see the rose gold. So if you didn't want to add the stencil on, mm -hmm. you could just stop like at this. But I think the stencil kind of makes it fun. You know, and again, you don't have to do this on a heart. You could do this on any shape. Mm. So thank you so much for joining us and we will see you guys soon. Have a great evening.